and welcome to News Round, a recap of top stories during the week. Uh, first off, the headlines. President Tinubu presides over the inaugural FEC meeting of his administration. Those ministers on the performance won't be tolerated. Financial experts condemn breach of policies by the previous administration at the 65th Annual Conference of the Niger Bar Association in Abuja. And designer of Nigeria's flag, uh, Michael Taiwo Kikumi, dies at 87. Plus, Gabon's president, Ali Bongo, under house arrest after military soldiers now a seizure of power in the country. Now that's uh, news round in view. Now we'll begin uh, from the inaugural Federal Executive Council meeting on the President Bola Tinubu's administration. In his opening remarks, the President challenged his members of cabinet to work hard and be committed to creating a buoyant economy that will serve every Nigerian. Take a listen. Ministers, arriving for the inaugural Federal Executive meeting of this administration taking place in the Council Chamber. As they find their way to their seats, they exchange pleasantries. Once the president arrives, the program kicks off. The president makes clear his expectation that this cabinet create an economy that will serve Nigerians. The expectation is high. And there's a tough time right now. We must work hard commit ourselves and create a buoyant economy that will serve every Nigerian. He also highlights the policy agenda of his administration. We must unlock the energy and natural resources of this country. We must start to produce for ourselves dig ourselves out of the hole, focus on education, health care, make social investment. The meeting then continues behind closed doors. <laughs> Hours later, some of the ministers brief journalists on the outcome of the meeting. Mr. President's vision includes the idea of harnessing the human capital of our youthful population to achieve the prosperity for everyone to mobilize the social capital that is in our country, uniting us as a people to drive this transformation that is his direction uh, for the administration. We also examined the president's eight point agenda. And those are basically food security, ending poverty, economic growth and job creation access to capital, particularly consumer credit, inclusivity in all its dimensions, particularly for as regards youth and women, improving security, improving the playing field on which people and particularly companies operate, rule of law, and of course, fighting corruption. The, His Excellency has mandated that we should improve and we are working on improving um, the number of jobs created. And this is going to be true, uh, revamping the MSMEs and improving industrialization in Nigeria. Mr. President, for the first two, uh, during his campaign, he promised 50 million jobs and that's our target. So coming out of this meeting, the ministers say they are energized and they're going out to make Nigerians feel the positive impact of this administration's efforts as soon as possible. From the presidential villa, Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News.
And in other stories, the fiscal and financial policies under the former president, Muhammadu Buhari, uh, was a subject of discussion on day two of the Nigeria Bar Association 65th Annual Conference in Abuja, with stakeholders condemning the breach of policies. The Chief Executive Officer of CFG Advisory, Mr. Aditya Adebajo, who uh, expressed the address the first plenary of the conference, said beyond the facts that Nigeria's economy is not growing, it is losing value and making life difficult for many Nigerians. The Nigeria Bar Association Conference is a gathering of learned minds, and this is the first plenary of the 65th edition in Abuja. <laughs> Getting the economy right, decoding Nigeria's strategy for growth, diversification, inclusivity, and sustainability is the focus of the plenary session. Financial experts here lament the policy somersault of the previous administration. Unfortunately for us, the last eight years in this economy has been one of unmitigated economic disaster. And when I talk about disaster, I'm, not, I'm talking about disaster of serious proportions. Over 130 million people are below empowerment line. It's not below the one dollar that they talk about. You're talking about what practically families do need to take care of the basic needs at line above in food, in healthcare, in education, in sanitation, in social security. Other speakers prefer solutions. They also outline the challenges of doing business in Nigeria. The average Nigerian is economically disadvantaged and is in misery. Our current happiness index as a country, when we're looking at all the countries in the world, we are at 114 uh, in terms of position. It means that something and so many things are not working. Unless we make efforts, unless we make efforts to identify the challenges and problems, acknowledge them truthfully. Because oftentimes you see government officials saying one thing and another thing is happening. So we must begin to identify these problems and at the same time accept that they exist truthfully. Although the oil sector provides 95% of Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings and 80% of its budgetary revenues, stakeholders are unanimous on the need to make a shift from a mono to a diversified economy that promotes agriculture, manufacturing and tradable services. And the President has restated his commitment and support for a robust public-private sector partnership to grow the economy, saying that his administration's reforms are anchored on a strong adherence to accountability and transparency. President Bola Tinubu said this during a meeting with the board and management of the Niger Economic Support Group, NESG, at the presidential villa. Members of the board and management of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group at the presidential villa for a courtesy call on President Bola Tinubu. Receiving them with the president are the vice president, the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, amongst other top government officials. The NESG chairman applauded the economic decisions taken so far by the president, such as the fuel subsidy removal and the foreign exchange rate harmonization. He affirmed the group's readiness to support the federal government's economic drive. More importantly, they're also here to drive investments. Uh, be it domestic investment and, of course, um, international investment. Um, a critical part of that will be tackling the issue of insecurity and, of course, tackling um, and it will be hoping to improve our product production. President Tinubu, in his remarks, made clear the resolve of his administration to work with the private sector. We believe it in courage and our own endeavors. And it can only be driven by a serious collaboration with the private sector and the public sector. 
struck their heads to accountability and transparency in every way possible. He also acknowledged the difficult situation the country is passing through and emphasized that firm steps must be taken to build a better future for the country. The world is dynamic. We are covering this dynamic as well. Uh, we are confronted with climate change and many uh, other challenges. But here, somewhere, and in the face of all this stuff, in the eye of the storm, there is a quiet and peaceful corner for those who can search patiently and be stunned. We will find ours. The president assured the group that all will be done to fully implement the eight priority reform areas under the renewed hope agenda within the next four years for the benefit of the country. Lan Ray Lassese, Channels Television News. At the Nigeria uh, Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative has launched an online project to hold accountable political, politically exposed persons who are in the business of extracting the country's mineral resource. At the official launch of the project in Abuja, the Executive Secretary of NATI, Mr. Bonaya Oji, notes that the project will help to curb corruption in the system and foster transparency and accountability this platform for use in the best interests of public interests and for humanity. It is the official launch of an online accountability project of the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, and its development partners. In sharing information and data that will support our security agencies. According to the executive secretary, the project, joining the dots with politically exposed persons in Nigeria, will help to foster transparency in the country's extractive sector. What Connecting the Dot is said to offer to NITI's beneficial ownership program is to strengthen our capacity to guarantee data accuracy, data e efficiency, utilization, availability, and easy access to relevant, competent authorities and the private sector, including financial institutions and designated non-financial institutions. Four years ago, NATI also launched the Beneficiary Ownership Register, which is a data bank of real owners of industries that are extracting mineral resources in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Unlike the previous program, Joining the dots with politically exposed persons in Nigeria is expected to provide information on politically exposed persons who have interest in the extractive sector, unveil areas of conflict of interest, and verify information on beneficial owners, amongst others. Nati and its partners are hoping that the launch of the project will help to improve natural resources governance in the country. The platform is to generate concrete results and actions that, are, that can enhance Nigeria's accountability and transparency framework for its extractive sector. We're gathered here today because the past 12 months, budget, directorial, legislativo, yeah. has been working, you know, assiduously with NATI, um, follow taxes, other partners to make sure that they bring the different types of data together so we can begin to understand who is really controlling our natural resources in Nigeria. Nigeria's extractive industry, including the oil and gas sector, is shrouded in so much opacity, which has led to the loss of revenue for the government, a development that NATI is hoping to change with the launch of the civil society led project. And when News Round returns, Nigeria flag designer Pat Taiwo Kikumi dies at 87. Stay with us. Welcome back. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery, has asked Nigerian recipients of the Shivening Scholarship to aspire to create a positive change in the country after their studies. At a pre departure reception held in Abuja, he urged the scholars to take advantage of the opportunity to aim for excellence and be great ambassadors for Nigeria and the UK. 
Beaming with smiles and excitement, these are Nigerians set to embark on a journey many only dream of. They have scaled all hurdles to emerge recipients of the prestigious and highly competitive UK Chevening and Commonwealth Scholarships and are gathered for a pre-departure reception. Diversity of expertise. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Richard Montgomery, commends their hard work, perseverance and resilience evident during the selection process and challenges them to aim for excellence. I really want you to aspire to do great things. Great things in whatever line of work you choose. It could be a private initiative, it could be for the public good. But if I look back at some of the alumni of the Commonwealth Achieving Schemes, there are people who've done great things, who've achieved high office, or done amazing things in their chosen area of specialism. And so I want you to aspire to use the opportunity to do great things and come back and help Nigeria move forward. <laughs> Certificates are then handed to the scholars to seal the deal and confirm their place in the 2023 cohort. Followed by some words of wisdom. I encourage them to get involved in community life in the universities where they're going to. And I, I suggested that they might want to understand the UK. We have our challenges as well as our opportunities. We have a big opportunity and they must make use of the opportunity they have. The scholarship changed my life for the better, uh, and they must be good ambassador of this great nation of art and come back and imbibe what they've learned. Some of the recipients share their expectations and plans for when they conclude their studies. I'm looking forward to experiencing the UK and the world at large, and I'm looking forward to coming back to Nigeria to impact tremendously in my area. I'm actually looking forward to get knowledge on the geohazards, the latest technologies in geohazards to study volcan volcanology, volcano geodesy, and apply it to our system here in Nigeria. You want to work around improving maternal and child health outcomes, so I really look forward to coming back and doing so much with my NGO. Looking to form lifetime connections. I'm looking to expand my niche. I'm looking to gain a global platform to do the work that I already do. Now in its 40th year globally and 39th year in Nigeria, Chevening scholarships are awarded yearly to individuals who demonstrate intellectual ability, leadership potential, and most importantly, a commitment to the development of their home country. Chivening! As these scholars begin their journey, the society will patiently await their return and imminent contribution to the growth and development of Nigeria. Victor Mathias, Channels Television News. And one of Nigeria's creative geniuses and patriots who designed the nation's flag, Pam Michael Tawa Kinkumi, is dead. His death following a brief illness was, give, was announced by his son, Kinkumi Akinkumi, via social media post. Kinkumi was conferred with the national honor of the Officer of the Order of the Federal Republic by former President Goodluck Jonathan for his service to the nation. Creative minds went wild in 1959 when the government of pre-independence Nigeria called for entry for the design of a symbol of national identity. That was when 23-year-old student Michael Taiwo Akinkumi came to the rescue. And it came down to these two simple but profound colors, green and white, with the red radiating sun on the vertical white band bordered on both sides by green. Eventually, the radiating sun was removed and left with just green and white, which still stands as the official flag of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, green representing natural wealth and white representing peace and unity. The flag was first officially hoisted on October 1, 1960, Nigeria's Independence Day. At 87, the creative genius and patriot who designed that flag has died. Just suddenly, around that 2 p.m., I just saw that the, the way he was breathing is not that okay. Immediately, and I took him to hospital. So, unfortunately, getting there, the doctor checked him. They tried their best, but 
at the end, we lost him. Pa Taiwo Akikumi, a twin, was born in 1936 in Ibado in the old western region and had his secondary education in Ibado Grammar School IGS in 1950. He left IGS in 1955 and took an appointment as an agriculturist at the Western Region Secretariat in the same city as a civil servant. He later gained admission to the Norwood Technical College, which is today's Lambeth College in London, where he studied electrical engineering and it was while studying he designed the Nigerian flag when the government called for entries. Pa Akikumi returned to Nigeria in 1963 and went back to the Agricultural Department at the Secretariat in Ibado as a civil servant until 1994 when he became an Assistant Superintendent of Agriculture. After his retirement, former President Goodluck Jonathan conferred on him the national honor as an officer of the Order of the Federal Republic and was placed on a monthly salary. His family and friends eulogize his legacy. So he's somebody that, you know, uh, the space, the vacuum, you know, I pray to God Almighty to fill it for us. Mm. I've been with him since 1976. Mm. When we are, he has been a very nice person to me and he took us as if to say we are his son. In 2021, Pa Akikumi unveiled the world's largest national flag in Ibado, the Oyo State Capital. Pa Michael Taiwo Akikumi, thank you for your service. And we end news round in Gabon where a dozen mutinous soldiers appeared on national television announcing the cancellation of recent election results and the dissolution of all democratic institutions of the country. The announcement comes after President Alivongo Nimba was re-elected for a third term in an election the opposition described as a fraud orchestrated by the ruling party. The soldiers also said one of the leader's sons was under arrest for treason. Ce jour, 30 août 2023. This is the moment a group of senior Gabonese military officers appeared on national television and announced they had seized power minutes after the state election body announced President Ali Bongo had won a third term. Appearing on national television, the Gabonese military officers said they represented all security and defense forces in the Central African nation, adding that the election results were cancelled and all borders were closed until further notice. On this day, August 30th, 2023, we, the Defense and Security Forces, meeting within the Committee for the Transition la transition and Restoration of Institutions on behalf of the Gabonese people and the guarantor of the protection of institutions have decided to defend peace de la by putting an end to the current regime. Avant the general elections of August 26, 2023, as well as the truncated results, are cancelled. The borders are closed until further notice. All institutions of the Republic tronqués, are dissolved. Sont annulés. Les frontières sont fermées jusqu'à nouvel ordre. People took to the streets in celebration in support of the seizure of power, with some holding the Gabonese flags as military vehicles drove by in the Gabonese city of Port Gentil. <laughs> Meanwhile, the European Union the foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell says defense ministers are to discuss the situation in Gabon, adding that a coup, if confirmed, would heap more instability on the region. Well, the news are confused. I got the news this morning early. If this is confirmed, it's another military coup, which increases instability in the whole region. I cannot say more because I don't have uh, more information, but certainly is an issue that will be put on the table when we will discuss. Uh. Look, the whole area, starting with Central African Republic, then Mali, then uh, Burkina Faso, now uh, Niger, maybe Gabon, it's in a very difficult situation. And certainly the ministers, today defense ministers and tomorrow foreign affairs ministers, have to have a deep thought 
what is going on there and how we can improve our policy with respect to these countries. This is a big issue for Europe. Gabon is one of Africa's major oil producers and a member nation of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. Gabon's coup leader, say deposed President Ali Bongo Ondimba, is under house arrest and one of his sons has been arrested for treason. However, his overthrow would end his family's 56-year-old on power in Gabon. And if successful, the coup would represent the eighth in West and Central Africa since 2020. Coups in Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Chad and Niger have undermined democratic progress in recent years. And that's News Round for the week. Thank you for watching. I'm Lati Williams. Bye for now.